And it's a cheat code. I tell everyone, this is a cheat code to always stay on fire for God. And I'm, I'm not making this up. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast. I am so excited because today we have a very, very special guest with us. Actually, my first in-person guest. Guys, I'm excited about today's podcast episode. I'm going to be introducing to you guys a beautiful, amazing woman of God. Her name is Melina Thomas, and she is a vibrant Latina Christian speaker on a mission to spread joy and words of encouragement to all who lend an ear. With her infectious energy and unwavering faith, Melina has become known for her powerful message, Be the First. Melina empowers individuals to overcome the fear of failure. She encourages others to step out boldly, making positive decisions that will shape their future, regardless of their circumstances or surroundings. Her rallying cry resonates deeply with those looking to live a life that glorifies God. Armed with a degree in media, communications, and journalism, Melina has harnessed her expertise to create captivating content on social media. Through her engaging posts, she has reached over 50 million people across the globe. That is amazing. Her ability to connect with people from diverse backgrounds and ages is a testament to her genuine belief that we all need encouragement regardless of who we are. Wow. Let us welcome to the podcast, Melina. Welcome, Melina, sis. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to have you here today. Yeah, I'm so humbled. And like having you read that, it's just kind of like, wow, I have done that. And I didn't even realize that your degree was like in journalism and communications. We have more in common than I thought. So I didn't even know that because my degree is in creative writing. Oh, wow. So, yes. I'm so excited to have you. I met Melina at a recent pageant I just did, Miss Florida USA. And she was like my line partner backstage for the opening number. So she was like right in front of me. And let me tell you, Melina kept me on point and like my just my spirit gravitated to her. And when I got home and all the girls, we switched social media and we connect, I'm like, this girl is a woman of God. She's talking about the Lord on her platform. I was like, okay. And we're in the same state. I'm like, we need to connect and do a podcast. And here we are today. Yes. And it was so interesting when you reached out, you were like, oh, you know, there was something that gravitated me towards you. And she goes, and now I know it was the Holy Spirit. And I was like, yes, because, you know, in pageantry, you never know what to talk about. And so for me and pageants particularly, I like to just lead in love and, and warmth and openness. And then if someone opens the door, you know, I'm going to talk about God. But um, so, yeah, it was really awesome. And there were a lot of Christians actually that competed at that system. And it was really great to see the amount of prayer that was happening backstage mm, yeah. in the dressing room and in the makeup stations like god was present during that pageant i love that and you you have that glow and i feel like when you have the holy spirit like you just know and i know personally why god led me to compete in that system and pageantry and i want to ask you what led you to compete i know we talked a little earlier and you said like this is a hobby for you so what kind of drew you into pageantry yeah so i kind of connects back to my testimony so I can kind of share that. So growing up, um, I was raised Christian. Uh, I was raised into like a Catholic home. And as we got older, I went to Presbyterian churches. I went to Pentecostal churches, not denominational churches. I just always knew that I loved God. Um, and then as I got older, I went to college and I got my degree. And in my last semester, actually, they had a workshop, an acting workshop. So all throughout my uh, childhood, I loved acting. I did theater when I was in elementary school and middle school. I would do competitions in high school. And so um, I always felt that I was going to be an actor. And my parents were like, that's great, but we're not going to pay for you to go to college to, to be an actor. You have yeah. to major in something else. <laughs> So I majored in media comms. And so while I was there, they had an acting workshop. And so I went and I didn't know at the time, but there was an agent that was there. And so after the workshop was done, he approached me and was like, I want to represent you. I think you have what it takes. Um, and I think that you could be a really big star. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this was like one of the few times where I felt truly accepted. I mean, I went to a Christian college, um, you know, I was in the Christian community and I always kind of felt that I wasn't the right type of Christian mm. woman. Mm. Um, you know, I just, I dress with very loud colors. I'm very girly. I'm very outgoing. And I just felt this 
almost subconscious push to like tone me down. And, um, I just felt, and I even remember in college praying to God and asking him to change my personality because I felt that I was just too, you know, rough around the edges or I ruffled too many feathers. I just stood out too much. Um, and I just wanted to be like a humble, submissive woman. Um, and so then there's this agent that's like, you have what it takes. You're spectacular. You're phenomenal. And I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, like this is so new. So I went out um, and I, uh, I allowed him to represent me. And within a very short amount of time, I became SAG eligible. So I was working on, yeah, I was working on TV shows on Fox. I was in commercials. I was in Hallmark movies. I wow. was booking a lot. Yeah. And so I booked a TV show on Fox and I played the best friend of a main character. And when the we filmed that in, in Atlanta, Georgia. And then when I came back, my agent was like, Hey, we have a really strong feeling this is going to get picked up in LA. You're going to have to fly out to LA for next season and your life's about to change forever. So I was like, oh my I'm, I'm, I made it. You know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm about to make it. So we have like a little lull between when, you know, filming stops and when pilot season picks up again. And so we go to Greece, me and my best friend, we go to Greece together. And for wow. some, for some reason, uh, we go to places mentioned in scripture. And so I'm standing there, right? And there's just this overwhelming feeling of like, the Bible is real. This is real. Mm-hmm. You know, this God that you've been, you know, told about growing up is real. These places are real. And it's like, there's going to be a big change coming. Wow. So I come back from Greece and I'm just like, okay, God, like I feel this call. I don't know what it is, um, but I need you to help help send someone. Um, because you know, I read scripture all my life, but do I understand all of it? No. And so what is this calling? So while I was acting, I was also a personal trainer on the side because of the flexibility of hours. And there was a coworker there who he told me he was vegan, uh, for, for religious purposes Mm. and that he was a Christian. Mm. So, you know, a little naive me, I was like, maybe, God's telling me to go vegan and that's the change that I need. Right. So I go to him and I'm telling him all this stuff and he's like, let's, let's do a Bible study too. And I was like, sure. So we, we ended up doing a Bible study and you know, I'm, I'm dramatic. I'm always dramatic. So, um, I sit there and he's like, okay, before we get into the study, what are some questions that you have? And I tell him, okay, if Jesus were to come tomorrow, what do I need to know today? Mm, wow. wow, good question, girl. Very important question. <laughs> so he sat there with me for five hours and we went through the word. And uh, he told me about the Ten Commandments. He told me about the Sabbath. He told me about the state of the dead. He told me about the Antichrist. He told me about the end times. Like we went deep mm. in scripture. And I was just like, all of this stuff that I've always wondered about, mm. I felt like I finally was starting to get answers. And it wasn't. I think it was this verse says, yeah. and I hadn't experienced that before. Mm-hmm. So within about two weeks from that, I started keeping the Sabbath. And for those that don't know, the Sabbath is just, when you read the 10 commandments, it's the fourth commandment. God says, rest on the Sabbath day, do not work, do not make anyone else work for you. And just to keep it holy um, because God rested on the seventh day. So from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, I don't work. I go to church. I spend time in nature. I play games with my family and I just really focus on reconnecting with Christ every single week. And it's been phenomenal. It's been life changing for me. Um, but so I started this journey and then acting still there, right? Mm -hmm. Acting still there and I'm still booking and I'm still doing things. Right. And so one day I'm like looking through my Instagram and I see this the TV show, right, that I'm in and I see this post that I made and I'm writing this post and I see at the bottom my caption says, all for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And in that TV show, I am not doing anything that glorifies God. Mm-hmm. I am not saying anything that glorifies God. I'm not wearing any clothes that glorify God. Mm-hmm. And so for the first time I realized how much of a hypocrite I really was and it was convicting and not in a shameful way. It was like, it was a wake up call of like, this needs to change. So then I, I start praying to God and I'm like, okay, God, if you want me to end this because your girl's stubborn, I need a sign. I need you to give me a sign. And so the audition stopped coming Mm. for like a month. And I was like, what is going on? I was booking every week. So for them to stop was crazy. And then I was like, okay, God, um, I really don't like this. Uh, I really thought you were just going to say, 
this is great. Now you're following me wholeheartedly. Now I'm going to bless you and you're going to win an Oscar and all these things. Yeah. But that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I prayed again. I was like, okay, God, if, if you really need me to leave, like I need you to send me another sign. And so I got, I believe it was like that week, if not that week, it was the next week. I got an audition and it was for a major film. Mm -hmm. And the description of the character was a hot girl looking for a good time, good sex and good drugs. That was her description, you guys. I'm not, I'm not kidding. And I and I was staring at that, and I was like, I can't play this role. There's no way I can play this role. And so I go to my agent, and I'm like, Hey, like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna audition for this. And he was like, I don't think you realize, like, they asked for you to audition. You're turning them down. Like, you can't do that. You're not famous enough yeah. to be telling people no. Not every seemingly good opportunity is a good opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. So he told me, he was like, you know, you need to figure out if you want to be an actor or not because you don't get to say no. And I was like, wait, I signed a contract that said these were like four things that I'm not willing to do on camera yeah. and all this stuff. None of that was true. Wow. That's to make you feel comfortable. But when you get further down the line, your morals are going to be compromised. Jesus. And what they say to you and what I was told was that it's not you doing or saying these things. It's the character that you're playing. So you shouldn't feel yeah. morally convicted. So they want you to separate yourself from that character. Exactly. Yeah. And what I'm, I'm here saying, that's not true. You know, I was an actor. I was on set. There was this particular scene that I had to do where a gentleman, you know, was, was getting physical with me and I had to like push him away. And it was my body that was being touched. It was my words that were coming out of my work, my mouth. It was their clothes that were on my body. You know, it is me. Yeah. You're connecting with that character and it is you. Yeah. It's kind of like you're lending your body as a vessel. A hundred percent. Yeah. So then when I, I came home that night, I, I realized I was like, you know, I have been taught and I believe now wholeheartedly that I am saved and that I have been bought for a price. So am I going to sell myself again? Mm -hmm. I've already been bought and, mm -hmm. and consecrated. Am I going to break out of that and put myself for sale again? Mm -hmm. And Amen. yeah. <laughs> and then that next week I went in and I said, I'm no, no longer going to be an actor. You're no longer going to re represent me. You were right. And I can no longer wow. be a part of this. So I, uh, a couple months, a couple weeks later, I got baptized and then I moved back to Florida. Yeah. But you lived in Cali. Oh, no. So I lived actually in North Carolina. Oh, okay. okay. It was right by Atlanta and Charlotte, which is where okay. I was booking mostly. Okay. And then if the, the, the thing to do nowadays is to live out here on the East Coast yeah. and try to book in it with Atlanta as much as possible. And then once you make it big, you move out to LA. Yeah. So it's much harder to make it in LA. Listen, we have no in common than you think. No, yeah. I was so serious. So my husband is actually um, into acting, even me a little bit. We used to live in Atlanta. Okay. We did a lot of casting calls on set. I recently did a commercial like a few months ago and people have been like, is that you on that commercial? Is yeah. That you? So I dabble in it a little bit for fun on the side. Yeah. yeah. But that's like his thing that he's into, but he also like has that where he's like, he wants to stay true to his values and his faith. And I think it's important for any Christian in every, like in any industry that God calls you to, in order to be alive, you have to know what it means to be alive even when we're sent to arenas where there can be darkness. And, you know, even though in our pageant experience, I was so happy to see that there are so many other women of God there. I feel like just the pageant industry in general, there could be spaces where there is darkness mm -hmm. and God wants you to shed a light or be an example and make sure that you're staying true to your values and what you believe in. And in going into this pageant, and I was very clear on my purpose. And one of the things that God or the Holy Spirit was really impressing on my heart is to just observe and learn so that you can do things differently. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember but do you remember after the pageant was over and they announced the winner, which she's beautiful, Peyton was actually like 
the one who sat next to me in rehearsals all the time. So she was like my other partner. Yes, yes. So she's amazing, and I'm glad she won. She's also an amazing woman of God. Do you remember what I told you, like, after it was over? Yes. What did I say? You said, um that you were working on something on a pageant system and that the values and morals were going to be different and that you were going to let us know. Yeah. (laughs) So that was like a cliffhanger. So guys, big announcement. Yes. Um, I have been in the process of praying about this and starting a pageant for Christian women that is based on a different value system. That's all I'm going to say for now. I'm not going to share the name of what it's going to be called and all that good stuff because I have to release things in wisdom. Okay, fine, I'm fine. I'm about it off here. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> you know I want all the details. Yes, but listen, if you feel led to pageantry and just feel led to have a greater platform to share the gospel, to be a light, have a place to share the different gifts and talents God has given you, I am placing the link in the description just so that you can receive more information and stay in the loop about it. Going back to what you said with your amazing testimony, I am proud of you for making that decision and drawing a line in the sand and knowing what your boundaries are. And I also resonate with you where you said, like, you're different, you're unique, like, you're not just this stereotypical image of what a woman of God is. Yes. Like, you are a spicy Latina. You have your own personality. Yes. And I can relate to that. And I've found it, like, as a struggle because for a season in my life, especially in my 20s, I was bound to that stereotypical box. But I know not just me, but also my husband and I, we've been called to entertainment we've been called to certain spheres but to be a light there yes but in order to do that we have to do things a little differently than how it's normally done Mm -hmm. and I personally have the gift of an evangelist I believe that I'm called to evangelize and share the gospel but I also feel compelled to do it in different ways in creative ways versus just the regular way that people would expect. So how have we found the confidence after finding Christ to just settle in who God has created Melina to be genuinely and authentically and knowing that you don't have to be in a box. You can do pageantry as a hobby. You can look beautiful like you look today with colorful, bold colors, but still be a representative for Christ while also keeping that balance to make sure that your life is honoring to him and you're not compromising your values. Yeah. So I think for me, it was, you know, after I got baptized, I moved to Florida. I had those about two years of just, I felt consecration. It was just really just me and God. And it was just us two. And we were just figuring things out. And I feel like sometimes God needs to take everything away to put in the things that are important and put in the things that can be used for his glory. And so when I moved back to Florida, four months later, COVID hit. So if I would have, wow. yeah. So if I would have stayed up and I would have continued acting, I would have been alone. I would have been jobless. Mm-hmm. I would have possibly been homeless. Wow. So God called me out of there into Florida, living with my family, with a job that went remote during COVID. My goodness. And a time where we could be totally alone, us two, and he could just speak to me and speak to me and speak to me. So during that time, I really felt that God was saying, hey, the personality that you have, I made. Now, does it need to be refined in the fire? Yes, absolutely. Because you know what? I used to be a hothead. I used to have a little temper. (laughs) Okay. And so I, I feel like God has put a lot of peace in me and a lot of silence in me, which I didn't have a lot. Um, and you know, when you're younger or whatever, but now I feel like there's just a lot more wisdom and I, and I catch myself way sooner than when I was young. So I don't like the phrase, like learning to love yourself. Cause I feel like sometimes that kind of, it kind of turns into idolatry sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I don't love myself. I love who God has created me to be. Yeah. And what he calls me to be. He has to be in it. Because if he's not in it, then there is no self to love. I am nothing without the Lord. Absolutely. I realize that the talents that I have, I have those talents for a reason. So now logistically, how do I use those? Because also God gives us talents and I can't just say, okay, well now I'm never going to use them because I'm not an actor in Hollywood. Yeah. 
Okay. So what are those talents and what can I use? So then I started creating content on social media. I started speaking. I speak in schools and states all over the country. In October, I'm going to go to the Bahamas and speak my first. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, but doing all of that. And then, um, I just, I had a neighbor who was Mrs. Florida International when she was young and she reached out to me. She was like, Melina, you need to compete in pageants. And I was like, I'm too short. You know, I'm five one. So I feel short too. Like I'm five six, but against the other ladies, I'm like, oh shoot. Like yeah. this whole time, my whole life, I thought I was short until I joined Patton. So I'm like, oh shoot. I mean, I thought I was tall until I joined Patton. So I'm like, oh shoot. So I'm like, short. But then eventually I was like, you know what? I found some systems where you can be married and compete because I was married. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just see. Let me just see if I like it. And you guys, I felt fell in love well, with I it. competed in a married system. I competed in Mrs. International. Which, which married system did you compete in? Uh, Mrs. Florida America. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, it was just, it was just fun. And, and to be able to be in a space with women who are married, who have kids, who have businesses, who have careers to me. And I feel like, I feel like maybe you'll resonate with this. When I was younger, I kind of felt subconsciously that like when I got married, my life was over. Really? That now my life is going to be serving the husband and serving my kids. Oh, wow. And so seeing women, and I always thought like, you know, I feel like I have this big calling on my life and that I'm meant to do big things, but can I do that as a wife and a mother? And then I, I compete in pageants and I see all of these women who are, you know, working with Vogue and traveling and doing all these things, but then also are a great wife and mother. And I was like, I yeah. can do this. Yeah. You can really, with balance and with God, you can really achieve greatness. And it's going to look different for different people. Yeah. God has a different calling in everyone's life. And no calling is greater than the other because we all have individual lives to touch. But being like being able to see it and then to see the joy on their face. Mm. Like I feel like, especially on social media, like there's so much content being made of like moms just being exhausted mm. and moms just being almost abused. Yeah. And it doesn't make it yeah. look enticing yeah. at all. And so I see all these women that are, that are joyful to be wives yeah. and to be mo- mothers. And they're, they're showing me their daughter's Facebook and they're like, Oh yeah. And she's doing this. Da, da, da. Like, that's how my mom was. She was so proud of us growing up. And yeah. so it made me excited again yeah. to like, to be a woman and to be a wife and to possibly, you know, be a mother. Um, so it was really eye opening. And then also, you know, a lot of people see in pageantry, they, they see the competition, but that's, 70 or that's 25% of the actual work. Mm. 75% you yeah. don't see. It's the work. It's the, the working with the nonprofits. It's the speaking engagement. It's the writing the books. It's, it's the doing the podcast. It's all of these things. And the competition is just the last note. Yes, exactly. And so to me, it was like, uh, the 75% I'm obsessed with the 25% is great. Cause you know, I love a little yeah, glitz and yeah. glam. So it all just kind of tied up. And then it was also, uh, my morals are still intact mm-hmm. and I get yeah. to be myself. Yeah. I get to be myself. I don't get to play another character. Yes. I get to be myself and I am in control of what I wear. Mm-hmm. I'm in control of what I do. And there's different systems. So if there's a system that I don't align with, yes. I won't compete. Some pageant systems, they they still do swim. And so for me personally, I, I felt convicted to only wear a one piece and yeah. for swim. Um, but now I'm looking for systems that they don't have swim, yeah. that they do, you know, either fitness or they do a talent or something instead of swimsuit. But that's just my personal conviction yeah. now. But that was different. You know, last year or two years ago, I was fine with swim. Yeah. Last year, I was, I was fine with one piece. Now I'm like, I just want yeah. I just want to wear some leggings. When it comes to how you want to present yourself, that's a big thing. I have a lot of girls on social media, they'll reach out to me and they'll be like, you know, I feel like Christians push the whole modesty thing. And like, what is that about? And I'm like, oh, girl, that's a whole podcast. It I is. I need to do a podcast about that. You might have to come back for us to talk about that. But yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. And for, for me, it's like, I have a, an easy, just like one liner. It's like, I constantly want to be dressed in a way that if I was face to face with God, that I would feel comfortable Mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. And that that's, and, and I want young women to know that you can be elegant and beautiful and turn heads and be breathtaking and be completely covered. You can. Exactly. 
I almost want you to like stand up and do a 360. Yeah. This rest right now. Like this modest outfit of the day today. It looks amazing. Thank you. I think with all of that, it's kind of led to pageantry because you get to you get to be on stage and I miss that. But even now, God is opening doors again with Christian studios that are looking for Christian actors with experience. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to hang my acting yeah. hat. I just have to do it in the right way. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is a lot of people think like, oh, you'll become a Christian, your life is over. Mm -hmm. My life is so much more fun. Yeah. Exactly. So many more opportunities, so many great friendships, like the genuine women that like you look up, like so many good things. And I tell you all the time, I don't care how great your life is. I don't care. I mean, I was an actor. I was a successful actor and I decided yeah. to follow Jesus. I don't care how great your life is. God is going to make your life better. Yes. Every uh, single time. We're going to pause a little bit because Melina is actually an author and I want to share with you guys a little bit about something she wrote and we're going to talk a little bit more about her book. Fill me up. I'll have whatever she's having. Does this sound like you? You feel a calling to change your life for the better but you're not sure where to start. You want to grow and make lasting positive changes that will improve your relationship with God, yourself, and everyone around you. You've met people who have this inner light and joy, and you want to have that too. Pop open this book to learn how you can optimize your body, mind, and faith while learning practical ways to live a joyful and bubbly life that honors God. Guys, here is Melina's book, She's going to talk a little bit more about why she wrote this book, and I'll place the link below so you can check it out on Amazon. Melina, who did you write this amazing book, fellow author, um, and kind of who is this book for? So as I went through this transformation, I just kind of felt the calling to like write it down, write down the things that you're learning and write down your testimony. So this, this book is really, it, it's meant for, for new Christians, uh, new women, and then just younger women. But recently I've had a lot of, of more mature women read it and they're like, oh, I'm learning a lot from it. So now I'm realizing it's just for newer Christians. Yeah. It really is. And um, for me, my transformation was whole. It was complete. It was body, mind, skincare, health, and oh. spirituality. It was all. So uh, the book goes into all of those things. It goes into health. It goes into rest. It goes into skincare tips. It goes into, um, you know, spiritual uh, scripture. So for me, transformation is all things. So I try to touch all of the things that I know God changed for me. Um, and the, the cover of the book, Past the Bubbly, it's actually a funny story I want to share. Uh, share, because the title of the cover caught me by surprise for a second. I'm like, Past the Bubbly, hold on. Is she a believer? Is she not a believer? Past the Bubbly. No, I'm kidding. But I'm like, you know, she might have that evangelistic mind like me and just being creative. So, yes, I would love to know about the cover. Yes. So, um, one day at work, uh, my boss pulled me in and was like, hey, we got an official complaint for you. And so I want to share that with you. And I was like, yeah, like, well, what's the complaint? And they were like, you have another coworker that came in and said that you're too bubbly in the morning. And, that was the complaint. and we laughed so hard. And then I looked at him and I said, you know what, if that's the only complaint I get, then I have lived a blessed life. My Lord. And my entire life, people have always said, oh, you're so bubbly. You're so happy. You're so joyful. And now I'm like, it's the Holy Spirit. I know what it is and it's what draws people to me and I want to share that. And people think like coming together, you know, when you get together, you share alcohol. I, I don't drink alcohol and I don't promote alcohol. And oh, so it's so like, you're passing the bubbly Holy Spirit yes. bubbling inside. And that's the thing is, and, 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 and as you read the book, it, it goes into that. And it's like, you know, imagine going to a party and people say like, Hey, there's going to be bubbly there and you show up and there's just the presence of the Holy Spirit wow. and people are loving on each other and people are hugging each other and people are praying for each other. And you're like, this is totally different. And that's what I was experiencing. You know, like I realized that that joy in me that I was instilled in me was the presence of God. And so just like, for me, it was like a bottle of champagne, just like busted open and I just needed wow. to share it. And so that's what's and, and so it's 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 funny because it's con it's so controversial because I'll yeah. go to I'll go to Christian schools and stuff and I'll be like hey can we read my book and they'll be like um you know 
<laughs> with the way it's like this, you know, it's a little different. I was like, and I get that. I love it. I love that that choice. Yeah. It makes me take a second take. It takes a second take. And then for me, it's easier for new Christians or non-believers that are interested to read it because it's not a very, you know, it, it doesn't have a cross on it. It's yeah. not, you know, whatever. So they can read it and people not ask them questions, yeah. if that makes sense. So um, it could be like their secret. Cause I have, I have some followers that they'll reach out to me and they'll say like their parents, for example, don't allow them to read the Bible or don't allow them to read Christian content. Oh, okay. So they could have that. They have that. Exactly. Crazy though. That is, I saw, um, Someone the other day say that they got in trouble because their mom found a Bible in there. Yeah. Like, like, that is crazy. So we we have to be thankful by the way that we live in a nation yes. where we can have Bibles and stuff. And I'm um, going back on one of the things that you just said, just about how um, we can be involved in these things, but do it the right way. I just feel strongly to say, like, sometimes we have to just build our own kingdom platforms to begin with. Like if you do feel called to be an actor, if you do feel called to, you know, make movies or do these different things, like sometimes God is going to lead you and give you the, the faith that it takes. You may have to build your own production company. You may have to build the resource. You may have to build a platform for it. You know, we have to create the shows for our kids. Like we have to create the things that we're not satisfied with that the world gives us and just make it kingdom. So I just felt led to say that there. But um, I love that, that, you know, your book is reaching newer believers and um, just presenting it in a different and fun way. And it's just showing your personality as a woman who Christ has redeemed. Who is your favorite person in the Bible besides God? Oh, so my favorite person in the Bible is actually Noah. Okay. And it's it's for a different reason. So what I love about Noah is the only thing that describes Noah in scripture is that he was a man and he followed God. Mm. That's it. So it doesn't say that he was the best carpenter. Wow. It doesn't say that he was the best sailor. Yeah. It doesn't say anything. All it says is that he was a man that followed God. So not only did he follow God, he trusted God that he would be there to help him build this humongous thing that had never been done, yeah. right? He also trusted in God to get him and his family into this thing that he had no idea how to control. Wow. And God was with him every step of the way and he trusted in God to keep him safe. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people think like, okay, God's going to use me to do this thing because I have these amazing skills. No, God doesn't look for skill. Mm -hmm. God looks for obedience. Yes. Every step of the way he looks for obedience. All the people through scripture, you'll see they they didn't want to speak or they didn't want to go into politics. So they didn't want to do these things. But God said, you will obey me and I know that you will do it with my heart and you will listen to me. So I'm going to give you the power to do so. Wow. So he was such a, a pivotal person in scripture. And, and, you know, for me, he's a parallel of Jesus. You know, the one man you know, humanity fell through one man, all of humanity can be saved. Yeah. Through no one man's obedience, all of creation was remade through him, you know? But there was nothing special about him other than he was just a man that walked with God. Mm -hmm. And when people look at me and they're like, oh, you do all these things and you have this, I was like, I'm telling you right now, there is nothing special about me besides that I walk with God. Because I walk with God, all of these amazing things happen. But I am no different than you. The same Holy Spirit that resides in me can reside in you if you accept it. And so for me, Noah is is always that reminder. It's like, get in the boat. Yes. Get in the boat. Trust in God. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be the best sailor. Just yeah. get in the boat. Amen. Amen. I love that. And it's crazy that you mentioned Noah. Maybe like once a month. I keep my kids home and we do home church so that I can practice teaching them the word of God from home. So last Sunday, that was our time to do that. And we went over the story of Noah. And one of the things that I was sharing with my kids that stood out to me about this is Noah had been building that boat for weeks. You're talking about getting a boat, but before we can get in a boat, it's like build the boat. Yes. Right? That huge boat with all these animals. And it's like, 
he was building a boat for so many weeks and people were probably talking about him or laughing at him. We're like, I don't see any rain. What is this guy doing? Didn't want to get in a boat with him. Just we're not on board with it. And despite that, he still had a word from God and he still stuck to it. He still was obedient and he still went for it. And you may find yourself in a place in life where God is telling you to build something. God is telling you to get in a boat. But the people around you don't understand. They don't see what you're talking about. They don't see in you what God is doing. But do not let that discourage you. Be obedient. Keep building. Keep building. And trust me, one day, everything that you built, you're going to, it's going to be put to use. I think it's crazy that you shared that because literally that's what we're saying. And that, that goes perfectly into like my major message, which is be the first. All throughout scripture, all these people that you see, they were the first to do a lot of these things. As you, you know, accept that calling that God has on your life, there's going to be something that God calls you to do that no one in your family has done before. Mm -hmm. Nobody in my family has written a book. Nobody in my family has content created. Nobody in my family competes in pageants. Nobody in my family does public speaking. And those are things that God has called me to do. And sometimes it's lonely because you don't have that clear, you know, oh, I did this and I talked to this person and you kind of have to figure it out on your own, but you're not alone. You have God with you. So you, you, you have the confidence that you, you need in order to move forward. So there's that message, be the first, be the first is, is my cry of like, Hey, if, if nobody in your family has gotten baptized, be the first. If nobody in your family is a, a warm and kind spirit that is non-judgmental, be the first. If nobody in your family does X, Y, Z, be the first because that thought is put in your mind because God has that calling on your life. And if people realize, you know, a lot of times people don't want to be the first, but every person in scripture, they are the first to, to open their mouth, to, to stand up, to speak out, to, to be that light in darkness. And that's what God calls. He calls us to be set apart. Yeah. So our, our story is going to look different. And so when you accept that calling, even throughout scripture, firstborns, the first fruits, they have that special blessing. You don't have to be the firstborn. You just have to be the first to say, okay, God, I will go because you have called me. I will go. I will be the first because I know that you will be with me. I will get in the boat. I will build the boat because I know that you are God and I will obey my God. Yeah. I think that's powerful. That is amazing. You saying that Brooke just brought something to my mind and it's going back to the pageant weekend. I didn't end up placing in the top 15 mm -hmm. for this pageant and the Lord kind of prepared me for that. And I'll tell you how, but the last pageant that I was in, Mrs. International, I had placed in the top 15 when I was Mrs. Haiti International. And on the last day, when we went to rehearsals, I was the first one in line for when I was going on the bus to put my suitcase in a bus. Mm -hmm. So I put my suitcase in the bus. I was the first one in line. And then when we got to the theater, everyone's suitcases were coming out. And my suitcase was the last one to come out. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I felt the Holy Spirit say, the first will be last and the last will be first. And I'm like, I just felt something in my spirit. I didn't know what that was about. I'm like, Okay, what did the Lord try to tell me? Does this mean I'm gonna win or does it mean I'm gonna <laughs> So I just know I, he was ministering to me in that moment. And then um, we went to rehearsals and we were doing like dress rehearsal for when they would call the top 15 and stuff. Remember, they were practicing that. Literally, she was calling everyone to be in the top 15 and everyone was going off the lunch. And literally, I was like one person away from being the very last person called. After that just happened, and I was like, hey, God, what you trying to say? Okay, I'm the last person. So that was just dress rehearsal practice. When the actual night came, and I was standing there on the stage, and they were calling the top 15 girls, and I was standing there on the stage, and um, they're calling names, calling names, and you're in that moment, and it's like time slows down. Yeah. And I'm just going back to everything that had happened earlier that day and just like what the Holy Spirit was ministering to me about you know, the first would be last and the last would be first and just the whole thing that happened with my suitcase. I just felt a big sense of overwhelming peace come over me and just a confidence because I just felt in that moment the Lord was saying like, even if your name is not called, even if you 
are not in the top 15, even if you do not receive this earthly crown, mm-hmm. like you are still first in my book. You are still a winner in my book. You are still a queen. You have a heavenly and eternal crown. And it gave me just so much peace and confidence in that moment. And I just think that God is so, he's such a good, good father and so amazing and how he was just preparing me for that moment, showing me what was going to happen, but just giving me peace with the outcome. And a lot of times with being the first, when people think of first, they think like first you're place, top, you're yeah. king first place. But yeah. being the first, as Jesus shows, it's like being the servant, being the one who's willing to wash someone's feet. Like being the first oftentimes feels like being the last, you know, being the one that's overlooked and forgotten. But God sees you, God sees you. So you may be someone who God is leading to do something and it takes so much faith and it's a hard journey. Like the process may be discouraging and overwhelming to you, but I just want you to know that like God sees you. God is not forgotten about you. Be obedient because man, there is an eternal reward awaiting you for your obedience. I think it's so beautiful. Like the Bible talks about even just crowns and awards that we're going to get in heaven, but that's not for our own glory. Those are so that we can lay them at the feet of Jesus in heaven and have something to give back to him and just worship him. So I think that that is beautiful. But if you could give one last word of advice to someone who's looking to stay on fire for God in their spiritual walk right now, maybe someone who felt like was on fire for God before, but they felt like life has beat them up and they feel discouraged. They feel like beaten down and they just need that um, push of encouragement to like, well, hit the flame. They need to be bubbled up. They need that. Bubbly. How can you pass the bubbly to them? What would you say to encourage that person? So I would say two things. Uh, one is what you feel is not always true. Right? We are very emotional creatures. Um, and there are so many times where I feel God is 5 million miles away and God is right here. But I am just so emotional and I am just so blinded by what's going on that I am not grounded in truth, which is God is always there. God is always observing. God is always, you know, being present and he is always 15 steps ahead of me. So know that what you feel is not always true. And the second is, and it's a cheat code. I tell everyone, this is a cheat code to always stay on fire for God. And I'm, I'm not making this up. If you share the gospel with people, you will stay on fire for God. That's good. Because when you share the gospel with someone, that other person gets that light. Mm-hmm. And they're so excited and they're on fire for Jesus. And now you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, like I did it. Someone, someone's saying, you know, whatever. Like, God, you know, it's not me, but like, it feels awesome. And the, 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 the joy that you experience. And there are different seasons for different people. So I tell everyone, like, just because you didn't baptize someone every day doesn't mean you're not planting seeds. So even just being there for someone, praying for someone else, dropping that little seed of like, you know, hey, Jesus loves you and I see that you're struggling and I just, I felt God put your name on my heart this morning. I do that a lot. I'll be like, you know, hey, you know, I'm reaching out to you because I felt God put your name on my heart and I just, I'm here for you. I love you. And then you'd be surprised. I get a long text back. Woo, this is what's going on in my life and I can't believe it. And then, da, da. and I'm just like, okay. And two seconds, like it's two seconds of your time. So when you're constantly just sharing the gospel and being a servant to other people Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to be a pastor, (laughs) I'm not a pastor, you know, just a regular human being interacting with people doing that. And in a way that glorifies God, you will stay on fire because God has a way of just set, like sending you moments to Mm -hmm. keep you fired up. So you'll have a a conversation, you know, this is going to keep me fired up for weeks this conversation. So like, you know, this conversation, you know, it'll keep me fired up. And then, you know, three weeks ago, I got a message on Instagram. Somebody said something and that'll get me fired up. And then I'll be able to pray with someone on a street or something. And that'll get me fired up. It's, it's those moments. I think sometimes as Christians, we want our relationship to be a huge flame, but the God that I see, God is, is calm. God is peace. He's still, he's a whisper. So we need to be a light, but it's a constant flame. It's more of like a warmth. And I think we need to lean into being that warmth instead of looking for the fireworks because the fireworks come and go, but the warmth of God, Mm. it should be constant. So it's great to, to want those firework moments, but tend to your flame. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And by tending to your flame, you're sharing the gospel. You're staying in your word every day. You're praying with God every day. And even if you don't want to, you're continuing to do that. God's going to bless you for that obedience. So those are my two things. If you stay consistent in your word and your time with God, and you take the opportunities to share the light, God will always keep that flame yeah. lit. Oh my gosh, this has blessed me so much. This has been such an awesome conversation. And follow the lead, you guys. How can we find you on social media? How can they stay connected with you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, melina.m.thomas on Instagram. I'm actually going to be depending on when this comes out, I'm not sure when you're going to, but in starting in September, I'm going to start a uh, uh, virtual Bible study. So if you're wanting more, you know, weekly Bible studies with me, I'm also going to do like weekly get ready with me. So we'll, oh, yes, yes, yes we'll do. Ready. Yes. So like, we'll be getting our hair and makeup done and then just praying for each other's day. You know, I just want more community for the ladies. So, um, those are some more ways that I'm going to be constantly keeping in contact, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. It has been so fun. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section what you're going to be doing to keep your flame lit for the Lord. And if it's your first time on my channel and you like to see more content like this, definitely subscribe. And as a reminder, if you feel um, called or interested in joining pageantry, then definitely sign in below to stay in touch with me for a future update on that. But that is all for today. I love you guys so much, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Until next time, bye.